All right, so now we wanna jump into masking operations inside of Substance 3D Painter. If you are a Photoshop user, I'm sure you are quite used to the concepts of creating masks and masking elements in your shot. The same basic functionality and idea happens here inside of Substance 3D Painter. All right, let's talk about it. So by default, if I'm just dragging and dropping one of our materials from our asset panel over here to the left onto the object, you'll see that it just kind of gets added to the whole thing. I'm going to scale this so it looks a little bit more scale appropriate. And then I'm going to go into our layer stack here and start talking about how we can isolate this to just the parts of the character that we really want. You know, let's say that this is going to be this character's shirt and it's just gonna be on the upper half of the body. So one thing that you can do, and this is the first one that I always say, is this empty box here off to the right hand side is actually a very, very, very useful tool. You can see the pop up here that says, click the thumbnail to edit the geometry mask in 2D and 3D mode. A lot of words, what does that mean? So if I click this, if you look at the bottom right hand side of the menu, you'll see that now I have some controls over this. What are these? So when this 3D model was originally created, it was created, different parts were created. There was the body, the shoelaces, the shoes themselves, and the little heart that's on the belly button. So I can go through and either uncheck all of these, or I can say, click this little hamburger menu and say exclude all, and then go into the 3D view and say, I just want to add it there. Or I can go back into my 2D view and say, you know what? Um, I actually want it on the shoes. And like, you can, you can do it either in the 2D or the 3D view. So this particular case, I just want it on the chest. And you can see that clicking these two squares will allow me to go back and forth between the modes. So that's the easiest way of assigning materials to, to individual components. Outside of that, we can create, like I said, masking operations. So this little icon, which is the same adding uh, add masking operation uh, inside of Photoshop, we can click this and we'll get a drop down menu. There's basically two types of masks that you're gonna create, either a black mask or a white mask. The only reason why you would use one over the other, they're exactly the same thing, it's just a different starting point. A black mask will say, don't apply it anywhere, only apply where I tell you to. A white mask will say, apply it everywhere and I'll tell you where not to apply it. Uh, I usually start with a black mask, just the way that my brain works. And now we've got a third square up here. So we've got our first one, which allows us to control all of the parameter settings. We've got our second one for our mask and our third one to select the geometry. So let's jump into our mask. I say that because it's important because you will be in one and be like, hey, why can't I change the color of that material? It's because you're, I got the other one highlighted. Okay, so we're on our material, create a black mask. How do we fill this in? So the next step is this little magic wand. We wanna do that and say either add a paint or we're gonna add a fill. If I add a paint, then you can see what I paint on this, where I paint that fabric material starts to show through, right? Now, what is actually happening? You can kind of see it a little bit here in this teeny tiny window, but basically if I hold down the Alt or Option key again, regarding, depending on if you're on a PC or a Mac, and I click this, you'll see that I can just view the mask. And so what's the mask doing? It's painting things black and white, right? And so you're saying where it's white, do the thing, and where it's black, don't do the thing. And of course I can, you know, change this to be um, any grayscale value I want. So if I want a little bit here, a little bit less here, and a little bit less here, I can certainly do that. And when I go in, you can see it's fading down. So this, whether it's going to be here or not, is just a multiplier of zero to one, if that makes sense. So one being like, let's do it entirely there. 0.5 is do it 50% of the way there. So with this painting, as you can see, like if I wanted to add it to the entire top of this character, you know, I could, I could go through and paint all over and like me be very careful around these edges, but that's kind of a pain in the butt. So instead, what I want to do is utilize another workflow for this. There is a little button right here that I love, and this is our polygon fill tool. And so what this is, is this allows us to now, uh, by default, and we'll go in and say like, okay, 
I just want to grab these polygons and I want to apply it to those. Awesome. One of the things that you'll notice, like if I, if I go through and say, you know, like I want them on these, is you're gonna be like, you know, actually, I don't want them on these down here. Um, your gut instinct is to be like, okay, I just need to delete it. And you're like, oh wait, that's, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to delete the polygons. What you actually want to do instead, whenever you're working in masking, is again, you're painting things black and white. So instead of thinking about it as erasing it, think to yourself, I need to paint this black. So what you do is you switch the color from black to white, that eliminates it, and now you can go and can go about your business. That is, there is a hotkey for that, and it's this X button. And you can see when I'm hitting the X as a xylophone, you can see that it's, um, it's swapping back and forth between zero and one, which is very helpful if you're just like trying to add and delete things. Another mode to be aware of, and the reason why, even though it's a complex topic, is I covered the UV mapping early in the lecture, is that it comes up a lot. So we've also got this one, which is our UV chunk fill. And if you look at the 2D view, each one of these, they're called like UV chunks, UV islands, is kind of its own thing. And now if I click this one, and I have to turn to white, you can see it now fills in this entire UV chunk, right? And so you don't have to, you know, go through and select each individual one. So between all of those different uh, varieties of selecting areas, you can pretty much get wherever you want, either through the geometry selection, by painting, or by selecting polygons, or by selecting these UV chunk fills. So one other thing to keep in mind too, is that as I am building up this layer stack, or this the, the layer stack as a whole, know that you can actually have layer stacks within the layer stacks, which can get a little confusing. But basically if you're like, okay, say I just wanted it to this region here, but I actually, I have a 2D image. Like let's say I have a design, maybe, you know, we'll, 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 add it, we'll actually add it on top of this. So let's say I wanted to add a color on top of this that's actually like a colored pattern. So for that, I can add a, um, a new fill layer, which will be all white and go over everything. Let's say I wanted to add it to the mask that I already had. I can right click on this and say copy mask and then right click here and say paste mask. There was paste into mask, I should say. All right, cool. And now I've got that as being the same thing. So if I change the, you know, if I, if I change the color, awesome. Now, one thing too about, about these layers is that, you know, I can go through and say like, I only want to change the color and not the roughness or the height or anything like that. I just want to affect um, the color of this. And so I want to just change that. Um, and everything else just gets inherited from below. So one of the things too, is like, if I want to make a pattern on here, I could, you know, I could go into this and say, all right, cool. You know, I've got this painted up. I'm going to create a new paint layer, grab this and say, you know what? I don't want it in this region instead. And I want to, you know, I like this kind of like swirly pattern. Awesome. But you can quickly see how doing it that way is a real pain in the butt. So what I can do instead is instead of adding this as a paint layer, I can actually add it as a fill layer. Uh, and a fill layer, again, it adds it everywhere, all at once, like to the whole thing, just the same way that a fill layer does normally. It does. It actually doesn't even care um, where your existing mask is because it just adds a grayscale mask to everything. And so what I want to do is, um, I well, first off, I want to isolate this, which I guess I didn't do yet. I want to isolate it to just the body. And there we go. And now it's covering that. Um, I deleted this paint node so I can bring that back in here. So you can see again, it's just, it's, uh, kind of up at the top, but again, you can still kind of see it on the pants. And that's because by default, these are kind of layering, you know, like layering over top. And let's say I wanted to actually, um, multiply these together instead. So I can say you know what, I actually want this to be a multiplier of that. Um, I should switch these around. And now you're saying, I only want this, I, I want to 
read this paint layer and then I only want this fill to be on top of that. And again, you can kind of look through the layer stack in the alpha and then kind of check that out. So the cool thing about the fill is I can go in here and now add a pattern. So I can go through and find our, um, let's say we've got alphas and, and textures in here. I can go into our alphas and let's say I just scroll down and I've got a bunch loaded in here from Adobe stock and say I had, I wanted this kind of cellular looking texture on here. I can drag and drop that on there. And now you can see that that pattern is driving the, uh, the mask as well. So it's not just painted and isolated certain areas. I can actually create a pattern. And once I have that in, I can quickly swap this out with, with a variety of patterns and see them in different uh, capacities. And the really, really, really cool thing about this is this is all, again, non-destructive. I can go in here and say, actually, you know what, this red, you know, sometimes I'll do a bright red just to kind of get an idea of it. And then I can kind of tone that down. Or maybe instead of it being the color, I actually want to change the roughness on this and make that area, those areas just a little bit shinier or something like that. Um, or you want to just add a little bit of height to it and you want to kind of buff those out or push those back in, uh, depending on depending on which area you're working with. So having these fill components and having these masking agents can really, really be the unleashing quality to take your work to the next level. Because that's really 90% of what you're going to be doing in Painter. You're going to be, you know, taking a, a new lizard scales and you're going to drag that in here and then you're going to adjust this the way that you want and then you're going to want to say you know what i actually only want to assign this to the shoes and the laces and then go from there and, and then go from there so basically it's like it's just one step after the other when you're building this up and and if i ever if i can give anybody like one piece of advice if there's like one thing to get good at if there was like an exercise you can do inside of substance painter it would be this it would be make a new layer make a black mask for it make a paint paint eye then delete that do it again make a layer make a black mask now this time make a fill for it and add add whatever you like like this atomic thing to it and add a add a mask to it maybe tile it and just do that over and over again get used to the process because it's a little bit cumbersome and you need to like get it in your muscle memory create a layer add a mask do something to the mask and then you can go from there and um and we'll be on our way so then again 90 percent of what we're doing is is just that over and over and over again in certain areas layering things together and that's how we ultimately get our final solution so hopefully uh that clears that up a little bit and now we can move forward with our next step in the process